Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, Nitsa is in contact with Tesla again over a recent tweet from Elon. For now, Nitsa is just looking to gather more information regarding this tweet. Whole Mars had said users with more than 10,000 miles on FSD beta should be given the option to turn off the steering wheel nag. Elon said agreed and that the update would be coming in January. So this is now in jeopardy to some degree and we'll see how Nitsa handles it. I definitely wanted to pose this question to all of you to see how you feel about the situation of Tesla lowering prices in China. So here's the video of some protesters and what do you think? Should they be entitled to some form of compensation? I'll put my answer in the pinned comment below. And not that it really matters too much, but just FYI, there was some info taken from Chinese social media saying that the organizer of the protest group was actually a BYD employee. So of course I can't really confirm if all of this information is true, but wanted to pass it along. And for what it's worth, this user on Reddit did try to translate all of those images that I just showed you. So if you wanna pause the screen and read the translation, here it is for you. But the summary could be organized by a BYD employee. But again, do not treat this as gospel. And even further, Car News China saying some angry customers got inside a Tesla store in Chengdu and vandalized it, damaging the electric Cyberquad ATV and stealing various gifts and snacks. Additionally, apparently some of these protesters made some demands, including 100,000 kilometers of free supercharging, 10 million Tesla points, lifetime FSD access, and two to four years of an extended warranty, and apparently signed it with their fingerprints. Moving on, Motor Trend put out a new blog post covering the top 10 fastest electric vehicles that they have actually tested. No surprise, in the number one spot, the Tesla Model S Plaid coming in at 2.3 seconds. And in second place was the 2020 Porsche Taycan Turbo S coming in at 2.4 seconds. Speaking of performance, talking about the Model Y performance, we talked last year about how they switched suppliers for the brakes last summer. You may recall we talked about Tesla switching from the Brembo brakes to a new supplier named Mando. Fast forward to today and we have ZEV Centric, who is an aftermarket Tesla performance part supplier in California. They took delivery of a new Model Y performance last month and shared these images saying that the brake pads are actually smaller and are now the same size on the Model Y Performance as those found on the Model Y Long Range. So the only real difference right now is that the rotor on the Performance is two millimeters thicker compared to the Long Range. Now, yes, given regenerative braking, this really only matters if you're somebody who would be taking your Model Y to the track and really pushing it to the limits, but wanted to share it anyway. Now, we know that Tesla does not break out its model sales by geography, so this data is, of course, an estimate. However, the Model Y has landed in the top 10 best-selling cars of any type for 2022. With in the neighborhood of 252,000 units sold for the year, that would make the Model Y the sixth best-selling vehicle in the American automotive market and a 32.4% sales increase compared to 2021. And as if we need any more excitement for the Cybertruck debut this year, pickup trucks dominated this list with the top three being the F-Series, the Chevy Silverado, and the Ram pickup in third. Sticking with vehicle sales yesterday, Elon shared this chart, which was created by James Stevenson, highlighting United States light vehicle sales 2022 versus 2021. This is one of those where I would just say a picture is worth a thousand words. And quote tweeting that tweet, Martin Vieca said, for those who ask, why does Tesla trade on a higher PE multiple than other OEMs? Well, I guess you could just bookmark this tweet and go ahead and show it to him. And from the man himself, I wanted to share this chart as well. A lot can happen in seven years. This chart is just showing us the difference in U.S. light vehicle sales from 2015 compared to 2022 over the last seven years. I'd point out there are really only three brands that have actually seen an increase over the last seven years, those being Hyundai, Kia, Volvo, and of course, Tesla. And I would also add companies like Stellantis are made up of many different vehicle brands with many different models and variants. 
Tesla putting up these numbers with four models. I just wanted to pour some cold water on this tweet because I saw a lot of people talking about it today. Chris Zhang has said some things accurately in the past, so it's worth mentioning. But he says, a supply chain source shows if Giga Shanghai completes the production line upgrade, not new lines, the Q2 production capacity in 2023 can reach 35,000 vehicles per week or around 1.7 million per year. There's been a lot of different reporting on this over the past year, but some of it was saying Tesla was building a new factory somewhere in China that would help it get to that 1.5, 1.7 million number. And now we have Chris Zhang saying it's just current upgrades at the existing Giga Shanghai. However, if you look at the actual data so far, Tesla's best month when it comes to production out of Giga Shanghai works out to around 22,000 units per week. So what this tweet is implying is that Tesla would go from its best month ever in Giga Shanghai, which was around 22,000 units produced per week, to 35,000 vehicles per week, which is about a 60% increase, and they're gonna do all of this within the next quarter. Now, is this possible? I guess, sure, with Tesla, anything is theoretically possible, but is it likely? My answer would be no, because when you add in COVID and the demand and everything going on in China right now, yes, at some point, I believe they will get to these numbers, but is it going to be in quarter two? I'm not so sure. On Saturday, Tesla Twitter put out a tweet thread just going over Tesla safety, but I just wanted to highlight that they actually have been tweeting and putting out updates like this, which is of course really awesome to see. Nothing really new that we haven't talked about on the channel in the past. I'll include the thread below if you missed it, but I just wanted to highlight it's great to see Tesla putting out more educational content like this. In Singapore, Tesla is offering up to $10,000 in discounts on inventory Model 3 and Y units, part of which will be a $5,000 discount to customers who trade in a gas vehicle to purchase their new Tesla with an additional $5,000 credit against the cost of Singapore's required certificate of entitlement. And when it comes to Tesla in China, it looks like the price cuts have increased demand at least for two of the variants, the Model Y Long Range and the Model Y Rear Wheel Drive. As you can see, they've now increased the wait times from one to four weeks previously. That was the number across the board. But now these two Model Y variants are two to five weeks. The performance has remained unchanged at one to four. Here we have a very interesting post from Idra Group on LinkedIn saying another 9,000 ton press ready for shipping, but they say on its way to Asia. This is awfully confusing because the 9,000 ton press, we were all under the impression was only for the Cybertruck and that really only Tesla had the capability or the metallurgy to actually use this beast of a machine. So of course, let all of the speculation ensue. Could Tesla be building a Cybertruck in Asia for other global markets? Seems unlikely, at least to start. Could this be for Tesla in China, but they're actually going to use it there with a different mold for a small compact vehicle that everybody's been talking about lately. And I guess a third option is this could be going to a non-Tesla customer in Asia. I say that because of this. Zeker is already using a 7,200 ton die casting machine to create a one piece die casting rear aluminum body in the Zeker 009. Monroe has said over the past few weeks that most other automakers all have plans to move to the Giga casting manufacturing technique. So there are many other automakers that are already using this and have plans to as well. There's also some speculation online that these automakers could actually use different parts when the actual machine is then shipped. So just because the 9,000 ton press is used by Tesla, there could be a similar 9,000 ton press with a different actual casting machine that uses different molding injections once the actual machine is shipped on site. So hopefully we get more official information in the days and weeks to come. If you go to Tesla Careers and search for Texas and Corpus Christi, you will see a new third job posting titled Project Scheduler. And in this role, you will be playing a critical role in the construction of Tesla's first lithium refinery plant near Corpus Christi. This role will support all project phases from engineering through commissioning of construction 
by providing project management. And on that recent Twitter space, Elon said that they literally may be diluted at Tesla, but their plan is to have meaningful volume from this refinery within two years when most of the industry has been saying, nope, it's seven years at a minimum. So clearly Tesla is looking to crush those expected timelines. Quick update here from a Reddit user who shared this image showing more detail of the upcoming turning lanes. Now you may have seen this to some degree of course in the past, but now they're actually highlighting which lanes you should be in when there are multiple upcoming lanes in the navigation. I was able to find this image where previously the actual turn lanes were all just straight arrows and fast forward to this picture, now you can see they do have more detail. I also just wanted to share that this video was trending on Reddit and elsewhere over the weekend, but this is actually three months old. The exact same video where they basically just showed this angle of the semi for about 30 seconds was shared on YouTube three months ago. It'll be linked below if you missed it. Responding to Whole Mars on Twitter, Elon said, looks like V11.3 will be ready for wide release in about two weeks. Many major improvements. Auto Evolution shared this data. Now, to be clear, we'll get the official data at Tesla's financial release later this month, so we can figure it out for sure. However, Auto Evolution saying just in the US, Tesla opened 314 new supercharging locations last year, making for another 3,415 stalls, but that would be almost one per day. Doing the math, this works out to 0.86 new locations per day. James Cat on Twitter had a great chart on Tesla and BYD showing that they're largely not yet competing for the same customers. There is some overlap, but not as big as you may think. Now, this chart from James does include both plug-in hybrid and full BEV, but the gray bars are where BYD is selling and the Yuan range at the bottom. And of course, the red bars are where Tesla is selling selling its vehicles. And remember on Friday, we just showed that chart from Pierre Farragut telling us that vehicle pricing is very elastic. So once Tesla starts offering vehicles in these price ranges, then we know what's going to happen. But I have to say, I spent a lot of time this weekend watching different video reviews of BYD vehicles. And honestly, they're making some really nice cars at really affordable prices. So seriously, hats off to BYD, even though they're still doing about half of their volume with hybrid. Just real quick, Engineering Explained did another video on the Tesla Semi. If you've ever seen one of his videos, you know it's not really one you summarize, it's just one that you watch, so I will put it down below if you missed it. The car dealership guy on Twitter shared a chart from Cox Automotive with some good insight. This is data for new vehicle sales in the United States for 2022 and just highlighting the one column going over the difference from 2021, GM gained 1.6% in market share and Tesla gained 1.4%, while most other automakers are losing market share or are staying somewhat flat. Berkshire Hathaway has sold some BYD shares, taking the total ownership down from 14.06% to 1397 and to close today's video, this is going to be my vehicle to watch for 2023, the Hyundai Ioniq 6. It could be, depending on the variance and the pricing, one of the only vehicles under $50,000 with over 300 miles of range. And yes, I know that the fast back sloping is definitely polarizing, but again, if it can hit those numbers, then I think a lot of people will be highly interested. That'll do it for today. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.